It's a celebration of heat. Let us rejoice in deed. It's a celebration of feed. Let us rejoice in deed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim as-salatu was salamu alayka ya rasulullah as-salatu was salamu alayka ya habiballah as-salatu was salamu alayka ya nabiyyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya nurullah rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli allahumma iftah alayna hikmataka wa anshur alayna rahmataka ya dhal jalali wal ikram oh allah azza wa jal open the doors of knowledge and wisdom for us have mercy on us o oh the one who is the most honorable the most gracious balagh al ula bi kamalihi kashaf al duja bi jamalihi hasnat jami'u khisalihi sallu alayhi wa alihi marhaba 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 welcome to all our esteemed viewers and listeners of madinin channel globally mashallah throughout the globe we would love to welcome you to our program the prized celebration of eid and i am with our two respected honorable guests and ulama mashallah who are not new to the airwaves of madinin channel but rather mashallah azza wa jalla along in the month of ramadan you have been watching them over and again in our programs as well as their own programs that they have conducted for the upliftment uh, of this beautiful deen dear viewers for our reformation as well and i'm referring to none other than on my extreme left Hafiz Maulana Noshad At-Tari Sallamahu Al-Bari as well as our respected honorable Maulana Abdul Qadir Qadir Mu'ini At-Tari Damad Barakatuh Mula Aliyah and we would love to welcome both on this auspicious day of Eid with the opening greetings of Islam Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh How is Maulana Sahib? MashaAllah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allah's Karam and Mercy Maulana Sahib What can be done? This is the day in which we express our gratitude, our happiness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the day in which a banda, his heart softens for he has fasted throughout the month Muasab. And Allah Azza has blessed us with this Mubarak and auspicious day. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it's now time dear viewers that we listen to the fragrant ahadith and uh, beloved words of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam simply to make a change within our hearts to make us make this firm intention to increase our recitation of the rood and Salat Ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a very beautiful incident uh, since the day of Eid. Eid, mashallah families get together and uh, it's a day uh, a mubarak day remember the beloved rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated in a fragrant hadith zayyinu majalisakum bi salati alayya fa inna salatakum alayya nurul lakum yawm al qiyamah adorn your gatherings by reciting durood upon me like how today, mashallah, there could be many gatherings, home, fest, home gatherings, park gatherings, any get-together, wherever you are with your family members, form the habit to commence with that gathering in the name of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani, by reciting salat upon him. Why? Because the durood which you recite upon him in the world shall be nur and light for you on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatun wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Nabi Allah wa sallam alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, Mu'asab, you know, it's this part of the morning and this part of the day, you know, and we have just, mashallah, completed the, 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 our programs, mashallah, we have the early echo. And thereafter, of course, before that was the Eid Salah. Uh, it was that mahol, that environment of brothers coming early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure many were already habitual because of going to the Masjid for Salatul Fajr, mashallah. And this is just after uh, Salatul Fajr. What was the ambience and what was the atmosphere, Mawasab, around uh, the environment where you were, Mawasab? You know, Huzun, uh, uh, if you think about it, right, that a laborer, a worker who works for the month and when he receives the check or when he receives a message on his phone that, you know, your salary has been transferred, that how, what joy he feels, what happiness that, hey, you know, now I can, you know, I can pay off my expenses, my bills, food, whatever it is. You know, he looks forward to that. 
And so Eid is a day of feasting. It's a day of joy. It's a day to rejoice, a day to spread happiness amongst your family members in the society as well. So whole month of Ramadan, person is fasting, Tarawih Salah is there, not eating, not drinking. And now that leads to, it leads you to the reward of the joyous day of Eid. And in today, inshallah, we are going to be uh, mentioning different areas and cultures and customs of the world. And uh, we will get to know that, you know, inshallah. different places have different, um, maybe types of gatherings, types of celebrations as well. And alhamdulillah, Always, you know, the masajid are full to capacity on the day of Eid for Fajr Salah, for the Eid Salah. And everybody's meeting and greeting and shaking yeah. hands and embracing each other. And, you know, Eid Mubarak, Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum. There's such a beautiful atmosphere that you, you wish it, it could last like a whole day and, you know, every day, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And just this, Masab, it happens twice a year, right? Alhamdulillah, through the father of Allah, we have Eid twice a year. But when Eid al-Fitr appears, Masab, you know, um, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, my son yesterday asked me, uh, Abba, um, is this the Eid for the money or for the sheep? Allah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Even the children even know that, uh, you know, this Eid is the Eid for receiving money. Mm. This Eid is the Eid for receiving gifts. Mm. This is the day of hospitality. This is the day to demonstrate and show your love for your family members and be generous as much as you can. I mean, the amount of generosity demonstrated in the month of Ramadan should double up on the day of Eid. Why? Mm. Because we as Muslims, show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla. As Masab had mentioned, on the day of Eid for a person had fasted throughout the month and this is the payday. This is the prize giving day. And as you are watching the Aviyoza Madani channel, Masab also explained that in today's program, we are going to explore the world within a few months, inshallah Azza wa Jalla. Within a few moments of this program, explaining and expressing the different uh, atmosphere and environment throughout the globe, different cultures, different people, different types of celebrations, different ways of giving gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all these forms inshallah we can encapsulate them um, just wherever we can manage inshallah to let the viewers out there know that in different parts of the world this is how they celebrate their Eid. What are you doing to make your Eid a better Eid inshallah What are you doing to make your Eid a different one from the last time? In, in, in a way that you can even show you can show more thanks you can give more thanks and gratitude to our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah we have our scholars with us our ulama and uh, I'm quite I'm excited mashallah Masab, that uh, on this Mubarak day you know we even have the system of going to the Qabristan and going to the Mazarat making dua however before we go any further into any discussion dear viewers we have a beautiful kalam that we are going to listen and watch as we go along in our program for now mashallah since we have commenced with this program to invoke more blessings let us inshallah azawajalla recite few couplets in the love and praises of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this will surely aspire all the viewers out there who are watching madani channel this will rejuvenate our spirits and take us to the beautiful city of makkatul mukarrama and madinatul munawwara zadahallahu sharfan wa ta'zima inshallah azawajal masab it's a, one of the opening kalams of south africa in durban and this kalam is known to be like the anthem of south africa masab uh, in our way in the in the uh, 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 Rasul, a lover and devotee, will regard this to be an anthem of the country. And kash esa ho jata, in every country, this should be the first thing that we do when we assemble to praise the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the words which Allah Hazrat had used to praise the beloved Master sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, inshallah, the viewers can also partake in this, and we shall move into our discussion. Sab se ola wo ala Hamara nabi 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 Sab Se Ola Ola Hamara Nabi Sab Se Ba La Ola Hamara Nabi Sab Se Ba La Ola 
ہمارا نبی اپنے مولا کا پیارا ہمارا نبی اپنے مولا کا پیارا ہمارا نبی دونوں لم کا دولہ ہمارا نبی دونوں کا دولہ ہمارا نبی سب سے لا ہمارا نبی سہل میں زبا تمہارے لیے بدل میں ہے جا تمہارے لیے ہم آئے یہاں تمہارے لیے اٹھے بھی وہاں تمہارے لیے سب سے لا نبی سب سے با لا ہمارا نبی کون دے کا دے کو مو چاہیے کون دے کا دے کو مو چاہیے کون دے تاگ دے نے کمو چاہیے دین با لگ سچا ہمارا نبی دین با لگ سچا ہمارا نبی سب سے لا ہمارا نبی سب سے با ہمارا نبی سلو الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم صلاۃ وسلام علی کا یا سیدی یا نبی اللہ وسلم علی کا یا سیدی یا رسول اللہ So this was the famous kalam and the very, very famous kalam, should I say, written and composed by none other than Imam al-Kalam, Kalam al-Imam al-Shah Mawlana Mufti Ahmad Rida Khan Fazli Barilvi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. May Allah Kareem, for his sake, forgive us our sins, dear viewers. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, Mawasab, you know, this is that part of the year and day, mashallah, that probably your brothers and sisters, our viewers out there may be with people that they never plan to be with, you know, you just bump into people, you meet people at different places. And sometimes if you plan your day well, mashallah, then maybe after a very long while, you may have met with those relatives and family members that you have planned to meet with, mashallah. I'm speaking about the get togethers, Mawasab. Mm-hmm. Since it's this day when families do get together and different areas, different places, as Mawasab did mention earlier as well, that they have their own unique andaz and style. to show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla by celebrating and showing happiness on the day of Eid. So, you know, so one common theme that you'll, you'll see, especially when you dive a little bit deep into, you know, the different customs of different areas, such yes, as the countries, yes. how they celebrate, yes. is what you're talking about, is the getting together right. of family members. Sometimes, right. like, you know, you haven't seen a family member for a long, long time. Mm. But sometimes you're not on talking terms. But since you're inviting everybody else, you're inviting Allah that Allah person Allah. as well. So it's a wonderful opportunity in bringing family together or back mm. together. It's a wonderful opportunity in cementing family ties which is taught in Islam, which is encouraged in Islam. Yeah, And it's praiseworthy for the person who cements family ties. Mm. So it's a wonderful uh, chance for us to get together and uh, to keep in touch. Even if the person is abroad, another country, then at least keep in touch on the day of Eid. 
you know, I told totally them. agree with you, Mosab. You know, just to give the viewers an overall see, mm. Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, like in South Africa, maybe in the UK, different, but majority of the ideas that we have in this country of mm. how to celebrate Eid, Mosab, mm. mm. we can safely say it is the hawa and the blessings of maybe perhaps the Indo part. MashaAllah, mm. mm. <laughs> so because of the country living and having, you know, fourth generation and fifth generation Indians yeah. in this country. So this is how... Uh, you know, messages are passed on. For example, Mosab, South uh, East Asia, mm. their way of celebrating, their tradition, their customs could be quite different from the Middle East itself, Mosab. Mm. You know, from mm. the Middle East. Mm. Yes. So maybe Mosab, Mohamed Qadir Sahib can uh, enlighten us with regards to some of the countries, with regards to the Middle East, of how their way of celebrating uh, Eid can be very different from the South Asian way and tariqah of celebrating Eid. For example, there's, there's, there's say, Syria, Mosab, there's uh, Yemen, mm -hmm. and there's many other Islamic countries. Perhaps Mosab could shed some light there, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Mosab is such a, this is the beauty of Islam, right? Mm -hmm. For example, Islam, it encompasses all. Mm -hmm. It's a rainbow nation, alhamdulillah, and we have in Islam, different uh, race groups, mm. different ethnicities, any ethnicity you can pick up mm. globally, you'll find a Muslim there, inshallah. Well. Any region of the world, you'll find a Muslim there. Any language of the world, you'll find a Muslim speaking that language, mm. subhanAllah. Then there are customs and traditions, and wherever, alhamdulillah, Islam went, those nations, they accepted the culture of Islam. Mm. And uh, culture has a different way of uh, reflecting itself, you know. Most of us maybe relate uh, our cultures via our language, the way we speak, the way we interact, the way we wear mm. our clothing, mm. as well as um, uh, our food items that also has a great impact on the culture itself. Uh, certain cultures are only recognized because of the food, the kind of food they eat or they prepare yeah. or the kind of dress they wear. So Alhamdulillah, so when it comes to Eid, all these different parts of the world, Muslims in different parts of the world, they all bring out their own cultures, Alhamdulillah, which aligns with the teachings of Islam. That is the most important thing. Every culture is good, Alhamdulillah, as far as, as it does not uh, collide with mm. the teachings of yes, Islam, with the Sunnah definitely. of the beloved Nabi. I think that's a very Islam. important point, that Islam allows the customs and cultures of, of people, mm. of different nations and ethnicities, so long as it does not contradict and go against any Islamic law or teaching. Bishat, so that, that's something we need to understand. Yeah. Right. Masaba, in Middle East, uh, Masaba, speaking of Middle East, in Yemen especially, and this country was the one for which Rasulullah made dua. Allah, subhanallah. Allah, subhanallah. So, and this is the country and the tradition they on especially on the day of Eid is that they they make a, a cake uh, kind of pudding or cake uh, which is similar to in western world to honey cake subhanallah and um, like this this is in yemen if you go to uae or dubai or any other country in the middle east they it will slightly differ like for example in indonesia they have a different culture they, they also have a tradition of baking cake, but it's different type. Different type, exactly. And it's very unique, mashallah. And then if you move to maybe Africa. What about uh, rasgulla, Mohasab? Is this rasgulla also a very good, uh, I would say, uh, a sweet dish which I had tasted on the day of Eid in uh, India, in Hind, yeah. Mohasab. And um, I, I was very fascinated to have something so sweet with little sweet syrup, Mohasab. It's like round little balls that has some syrup over it. So, is this also a very a famous dish in India, Masa? Yes, it is. Uh, Raskulla, actually, the, the signature dish, you know, there's, yeah. there are many dishes that uh, make up, you know, your tradition. Yeah. But the signature dish for Eid is uh, semolina, you know, like um, you say, vermicelli. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Vermicelli, okay, or sevinya, okay. you know, you call it. Yes, yes, yes. In, in Urdu, it's called sevinya. So, Masa, uh, mashallah, this is also in South Africa as well with regards to these dishes that you have mentioned now. And uh, as we mentioned in the very beginning, dear viewers, that these traditions travel with people. So when a person travels and he migrates to any country, he travels for business. And if it's Eid Day, for example, they, they travel with whatever they have got with them. For example, whatever they have done in their country, they will take the very same teachings and ideas and implement wherever they are. And this is how generations follow Mu'asab, you know. We have a, a custom to this and that. Can Mu'asab, inshallah, shed some light with regards to 
I know in South Africa, mashallah, mashallah, we have different cultures because this country is filled with people from India, mashallah, from Pakistan, from Cape Town. We have people who came from Indonesia, from Malaysia, mashallah. Can mashallah shed some light with the multi-functional uh, Eid celebration, mashallah, multi-colorful, rainful, as mashallah mentioned, rainbow nation, mashallah. This is a rainbow nation. Can mashallah shed some light with regards This is to one of the beauties of Islam that uh, as Mullah Abdul Qadr Sahib mentioned, in whichever nation you go to, whichever ethnicity, whatever language group you go to, hmm. you will find Muslims there. Achha. Whether you go to North America, Jay. whether you go to South America, hmm. and today the, the Latinos, uh, they are, they, you know, they're increasing so much in Islam, hmm. so many hmm. embracing hmm. Islam, it's unbelievable. Hmm. And it, amongst the Latinos, hmm. we're talking about, you know, Argentina, Mexico, Brazil, hmm. Chile, it, it's just booming, Islam is booming. Subhanallah. And look subhanallah. at North America, Canada, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, USA as well. Mm. If you look at their cultures, now those are more like cosmopolitan countries, meaning that there are so many people from so many different parts of the world that have settled down there, that depending on which kind of you know a city or area you're going to, mm. uh, in the own country, the custom will differ. Mm. On Eid day, like all these, you know, maybe all these Muslims who have migrated from Indo Park, maybe they have a, a, an area where mostly that's where they are concentrated. Mm. So Eid day, they'll have mostly their customs, their customary dishes, right? If you go to a place where most uh, there's mostly Middle Eastern, like Leb Lebanese, uh, Yemen, etc., they will have their customary dishes there. Mm. And if you go to other places where there's more like African, African uh, uh, countries uh, that have migrated there, Malawi, Mozambique. Congo, Nigeria, you know, there's like over 50 countries in, in, in Africa, right? So you'll have their dishes there. So uh, it's more uh, cosmopolitan, multicultural. So this is where the, the, the mix is, the beautiful mix. But uh, again... It blends in so well, Mawasab, that you get, to get a little it's of everything. Yeah. Uzur, uh, Islam is accommodating, Allah but Allah. it has boundaries. Mm -hmm. And within the boundaries, there is, there's, there's tremendous flexibility mm -hmm. within the boundaries of Islam, within the boundaries of the Sharia, the Islamic sacred law. Here in South Africa, you have, uh, as you mentioned, Indonesia, a lot are, you know, almost 300 years ago, mm -hmm. the Muslims were brought from Indonesia, from Malaysia, to South Africa, Allah, 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 Allah. mostly as, as slaves and indentured workers. Even before the, the Muslims came from India, Indian Muslims, we I think about fourth, fifth generation, about 170 years ago, plus or minus, but they were here 300 years ago, plus or minus. And one very famous uh, Muslim, Malay, Malay Muslim they call him, because they came from Malaysia, Indonesia, these places, right? Indonesian islands, and was Sheikh Yusuf. Sheikh Yusuf was actually a prince in nobility, Allah. but he was captured by, uh, he was captured by the, the conquerors, and he was taken as a slave, mm. as a prisoner, as a worker to South Africa, to Cape Town, the Cape province it was called at that time. And today, mashallah, he, uh, they later found out he was a wali Allah. Mm. He spread Islam and you go and see, mostly they follow Shafi'i Fiqh. And you go to a place called Makassar in, in the Cape area and a beautiful mazar, beautiful mazar. And so serene, I, alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity of going there. And they have a lot of the styles of uh, the Malay Muslims in Malaysia, in Indonesia. For example, Indonesia, you know, on Eid day, they make this one cake called the thousand layer cake. Allahu Akbar. Thousand layer cake. And uh, so uh, it doesn't, it's not a thousand in the literal sense. That you know, one thousand layers. It has many layers, many thin layers that are put together with icing in between. Uh, I've seen pictures of it, but I haven't tasted it. Allahu Akbar. I'm sure Allahu it might, Akbar. might be tasting. Allah. Lapis, Allah. lapis cake, they call it. I, I think I also have, I had a visual look of the picture itself, of how the cake looks. It's something like flat masab and uh, gee, gee, it's gee. layers upon layers, layers yes. upon. Uh, initially, when I heard about this cake masab, the first thought came to my mind was it's about competition of how tall it can be. Allah. Uh, you know, like in some areas, in some countries, masab, when they get married, mm. uh, they would like to have the cake presented. And, mm. and now the tradition is such that the more taller the cake, is the more bond they will be between the husband and wife. Uh, may Allah Kareem, you know, save us from Israf in Islam, Mawasab. No matter whatever we do, all these dishes, all these foods, all these items, all these get-togethers, the park celebration, the home celebration, the family get-togethers, the union, the intermingling, is all for one purpose. Get together, enjoy life, show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla. As he says in the Holy Quran, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ so dear viewers of Madani channel, how do we proclaim 
the ni'mat and the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jalla. How do we show gratitude to Him? It is this day that some people have maybe uh, rerouted back to their own traditions before the month of Ramadan. Yani the sins that we committed before Ramadan, some have diverted their attentions back to that. You know, I waited for one month. One month not doing that was such a difficult thing here. The first thing that goes on in Masab on the day of Eid, maybe perhaps, may Allah forbid, but dear viewers, being at a happy day, since we are talking about the joyous moments, mashallah, azawajallah, some things which comes to remove those happy moments, is that, for example, some people who, you know, maybe perhaps save themselves from dramas and movies throughout the month of Ramadan. Um, maybe, maybe on the day of Eid, family is like, you know what, it's so boring, all the thing, let's go for it, let's watch, then there's something released, new came out, Allahu Akbar. Masab, uh, up until 15 years ago, right, uh, in my childhood, I witnessed it in my locality. And uh, it, it would be like the time, uh, the month of Ramadan or the, the crescent of Ramadan mm. would be cited. That's the time all TVs will be shut. You know, before the TVs used to come with the, with the shutter door. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they will be shut and they, there will be a parda on it. Uh -huh. You know, that you, you are forgotten now. Mm. And people would uh, dedicate their energy and the devotion in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preparing mm -hmm. for Ramadan, mm -hmm. keeping fast, and uh, TV, watching TV dramas was unheard of. Mm -hmm. But now everything has changed now. Mm. So now when after Eid, the same people who would put everything away, all the, the tools of uh, sins, you know, that are out there, dramas and televisions and so on, the same people now after Eid, on the day of Eid, everything will be in the open. Theatres will be opened and uh, jam packed. Yes, after having the Eid meal, you know, morning meal after Eid Salah, morning meal, and so on. Allah. Then they all set out. Some are going on hunting. Some are going uh, to cinemas. And these are. This is how, like, if, like, it, as if we were prisoners, you know. Allah, Allah, Allah. So that Allah. doesn't set a good impression of us, you know. The way to celebrate, the way to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shouldn't be to engross in sinning, but to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show our shukr in that way and and to abstain Allah. from sins. That is indeed a way to portray and to display our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having granted us this blessing. I mean, people are increasing, some people are increasing mm. in sins on the day of Eid. It's because the prisoner has, the prisoner has been set free. Allah. Shaitan Shaitan. was chained up as a prisoner. Allah, Allah. Now he's out for revenge. One month, you, you were starved. Like, you know, I couldn't make these people, I couldn't Allah. influence them to do wrong. Now he goes all out. And you see it, some people, and why are we highlighting this? Because look, we want ourselves, fellow Muslims, to have a happy Eid. Of course, we all want that. Have a joyous Eid. Mm. Have a beautiful Eid. But do it the right way. Subhanallah. You know, within, Islam teaches us the do's, the don'ts, the rights, the wrongs. It's, everything is there in black and white. You know, do it the right way. You'll, in, you'll have a beautiful, wonderful, fantastic Eid okay. and you'll earn thawab as well. Okay, Mohsab, so keeping that in consideration of what you have mentioned, for example, we heard about Yemen from Mohsab, mashallah, we heard about Malaysia, we heard about South Africa, we heard about Cape Town, Mohsab was, mashallah, mentioning to us uh, in Cape Town, uh, they way and tariqa uh, as to the influence is mainly from the Middle East countries. Uh, uh, the, like Malaysia, Indonesia, those countries, those the Southeast countries, Asia, right. the influence is there. The influences are there. So from all of this, we gather, Mohsab, that everyone wants to spend this day showing his gratitude and happiness. Everyone wants to be joyous on this day. There are some people out there who even never fasted throughout the month of Ramadan, Mu'asab. Though the fasting of the month of Ramadan, actually, as you said in the very beginning, you know, you work hard in a company, but the end of the month, at the end of the month, you expect some pay from the boss. Mm. And Eid is actually uh, a gift to the Ummah of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Creator for fasting for his pleasure for one month. This is the truth of the matter. Now, one should determine for himself as to if I have not really done justice in the month of Ramadan, mm. then do I really truly need to indulge so much into celebration mm. and make it seem as if my fast was the only one accepted in the whole family? <laughs> there's a level of respect, there's a level of, you know, we need to understand the reason behind celebration so that within the boundaries it can be celebrated. If you ask the truth of, uh, this is my honest truth, Mohsab, from my side. Yeah. 
when I want to do something on the day of Eid, the first thought comes to my mind, have I really done justice in the month of Ramadan? Do I even deserve to go and do this for myself? I like to spoil myself. I like to spoil the family members, taking them out within the boundaries of Sharia, within the confines of Sharia, without violating the rights of Allah Azza wa and His beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of the Sharia. Yes, we should do. But Muasab, it seems as if all the sharam and haya is now left at home. <laughs> On the day of Eid, Allah. it's a big bang out there, Muasab. To the extent that Saturday Aura, women's not concealing the, 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 the body parts as they're supposed to do in the month of Ramadan. The very same Islamic sisters were found out there in the market in the month of Ramadan, veiled from head to toe. Why? Because month of Ramadan, respect for the month of Ramadan. But there's no respect for the day of Eid in which you will show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is so not fair. In this way here, I feel bandas and the hard workers, the worshippers who worshipped Allah in the month of Ramadan, who done so much of good in the month of Ramadan, lose the hang of it on the day of Eid Mu'asa. But, but I'm, I'm going to bring this uh, back to partially. Partially, uh, the parents, what kind of mind making did they do? When they, when they took their children for eat shopping. Mm. Now, did they give them whatever they wanted? Mm. Especially girls, because of course they you know, uh, need to cover up properly. Yes. Young girls, maybe five, six, ten years old, when you took them out, did you did you buy like revealing clothes for those Allah, small girls? Allah, because now Allah. they're getting trained mentally now. Okay, you know this these are these clothing are, or, and these apparels are okay. So as they're getting twelve years, fifteen years, they're growing they're growing up with that mentality. Mm-hmm. At ten years, nine years, you can still you can still influence them. And believe me, as you as a mother or father, if you don't influence your child. Mm-hmm. Wallahi, I'm telling you, the wolves out there are going to influence Allah, them Allah, Allah. through social media, through the television, through the phone, through the tablets, through peer pressure, mm. through the educational system. They are going to influence and wrap them up if you don't do your responsibility. Even when you're going, you know, these fashions and what have you, you know, who are, go and research and find out who are the people who design all these latest fashions and brands. Most of them don't even believe in Allah. Allah. Allah don't Allah even Allah. believe in Allah. Allah. Some of them believe in shaitan. They follow shaitan. They worship shaitan. And they are designing all these brands. Mm-hmm. And we are just, we, we think it's my choice. I went in the shop. I took the green one. It's not your choice. You have chosen their choice. They have chosen 10 colors and put it there. You've just chosen one of their choices. Who? Allah. The ones who don't, who reject Allah. So, you know, celebrate it properly. Parents out there, you're taking your kids shopping, you know, buy them decent clothing, new clothing, not a problem, but no extravagance, no wastage of money. If you can buy something for 500, don't buy something for 5,000. Hmm. Hmm. Buy for 500, buy for 1,000. And another 1,000, help Allah another Allah. poor family. You know a poor family in your locality, maybe your own family members. Hmm. The kids can't, the children can't afford new clothes. Hmm. Buy them some new clothes, subhanAllah. Wonderful, Wonderful. You look at the smile on their faces, that, that makes your day that. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. So dear viewers, uh, this is exactly what we are discussing today. If you have eaten something after a very long because it's Eid day, mashallah, azawajallah. Therefore, you want to have it. So this is your own way of showing gratitude for this day because Allah has provided that meal for you. Whether it's a new clothes on your body, whether it's a nice, nice food and the lavish food that we consume, whether it's the places that we explore and go to, all of this is from the father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Masab, you know, I'm doing this because at this time, we are celebrating here, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, some people will be in Arab countries, Masab. Some people are in Makkah al-Mukarramah and Madinah al-Munawwara. Zadah Allah sharfa wa ta'zima. What will be their Eid? Allah Akbar. That Eid can never ever be compared to any other Eid in the world, dear viewers. Allah. Subhanallah. But to learn more about the Eid in Makkah al-Mukarramah, in Hijaz Sharif, mashallah, in Saudi Arabia. Let's ask our respected Maulana Abdul Qadir Sahib Qibla. Ji, Maulana Sahib. Maulana uh, Sahib, being there itself is Eid, subhanAllah. <laughs> and then Eid on top of the Eid that is uh, celebrating Eid there, subhanAllah. And the residents there, although as, as blessed as they are, alhamdulillah, and uh, this also only adds to the status in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because being in the city of Rasulullah <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one is already earning multiple rewards for a single uh, virtuous action subhanallah whereas uh, when it, in terms of sinning <laughs> it's only one, uh, one level Allahu Akbar so we can imagine when people do some good day on the day of Eid subhanallah and they decorate extravagantly the whole country mashallah this is to 
showed gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some places have public holidays. The Eids are regarded as public holidays uh, in some of the countries as well. Some countries three days, some countries are four days. And even some non-Islamic countries also, they have uh, Eid as public holiday. Mm. Such as uh, Nepal, I think, uh, India, and so there are some other countries as well. Mm -hmm. that are not Islamic countries, but yeah. Eid is registered as, alhamdulillah, as national holiday. Mm -hmm. There are countries where Eid Miladun Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is registered as public holiday, subhanAllah. So these are the days of rejoicing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has availed us the opportunity to rejoice in a halal way. And therefore, in uh, people in Hijaz Sharif, in Hijaz Muqaddas Day, in Makkah Mukarramah and Madina Munawwara, they come out on the streets and they decorate the whole city, meaning the entire city is like Dulhan, subhanAllah. Uh, like a bride. And, and, uh, and then, what they do in terms of virtuous actions, mm. one signature action they do is they find a poor person mm. and they will leave rice and other food items mm. at his door. So he doesn't feel bad at the same time. Mm. So when he opens the door, there's some gift for him, subhanAllah, Allah, waiting there. Akbar, Allah, so this is another virtuous action, alhamdulillah, that, that is done. Asa, apart from, yes, some people waste, but there are people who put it to good use. The provision that is given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they use it to give to other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day, on this happy occasion. Allah, Allah, mashallah. On that Jee. note, Zuhur, you know, it's important because it's so easy to do it the right way to and to have clean fun and thawab compared to doing it the wrong way, having so-called fun and earning Adab. Adab. Allah. So it's, it's simple. As Muhammad mentioned, you know, you have that uh, financial ability, buy a set of new clothes for a poor person's family, for the kids. You know, you have uh, lavish meals, make one meal and give it to a poor Muslim. You know, you're earning thawab, you're putting a smile, and you, when you put a smile on somebody's face, you get happy. You know, hey, alhamdulillah, at least a little bit good I'm trying to do for the pleasure of Allah. Allah and give some sweet meats to your neighbors also. Give some sweet meats, you know, to your that. neighbors. At least you build some taluk and connection with Mashallah. them as well. MashaAllah. Firstly, Mu'asab, the fact that um, uh, Mu'asab has, you know, uh, taken us to Madinatul Munawwara. Though we're sitting right now in South Africa, Mashallah, and this topic and discussion goes in like that. I'm just recalling and, and thinking of those fortunate Islamic brothers who desire to spend Ramadan there. Allah taking you there. For some who desire to spend the last 10 days in Iratikaf, maybe in Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa Jalla accepted your niyat and He allowed you to be there. For many, spending Eid day is the greatest of all Eids. And when you ask Amir al-Sunnat, what is your Eid? Allahu Akbar. You ask Bapa Jan, Amir al-Sunnat, about his blessed Eid, then he says so beautifully, Teri jab ki deed hoogi, jabhi meri eid hoogi, teri jab ki deed hoogi, jabhi meri eid hoogi, mere khab me tumana, mere khab me tumana, mere khab me tumana. Madani Madine Vale 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 Talking about hospitality, the hospitality of Madina to Munavara is unmatched. Seeing those thousands of brothers sharing their iftar alone is a sign to tell you when this is the condition of iftar, you have not seen what is Eid altogether. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. We have seen Amir al Sunnat in the beautiful city of Madir al Munawar on the day of Eid distributing money to people. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. Whatever he has with him, subhanAllah, he distributes to others. And that shows hospitality. Mm -hmm. I read a waqiya story about a person who on the day of Eid sat with his wife to have something to eat. Mm -hmm. It was the early parts of the morning when you enter after Salatul, after Eid Salah, you enter the home, you have some sweet dishes. And this is probably the tradition throughout the globe, Mu'asab. This is what men folk would do. They would go for Eid Salah. After Eid Salah, the Sunnah is to go back home. You, you would leave from one home and you will enter from another way. So he sat to have a meal. And then just before he could put the first mosul in his mouth, he heard a knock on the door. After inquiry, it was known that there is a beggar at the door. This man was so 
angry Mu'asab that even on the day of Eid, beggars don't give us a break. Like seriously, can't I have one peaceful meal with my wife and without any disturbance, he himself goes to the gate. Instead of his worker giving some food to the beggar who came out there, he himself went, he opened the door and he pushed him so hard that the beggar fall, fell into the ground, Mu'asab. He fell hard to the ground. He woke up, he made Mu'afi, kya karega pichara? And then he left from there. Dear viewers, Focus on this beautiful parable which will enlighten our hearts. Then what happens next, Mohsab, is just so amazing. This is also Eid in some countries, Mohsab, Allahu Akbar. Since we're talking about hospitality, a year had passed, some time had passed. That person who pushed that beggar, he went downhill slowly and slowly. As time went, by the passage of time, he lost his business. He lost all his savings. He lost whatever he had, Mohsab, Qibla to a certain extent that his wife then com comes to him and says, you know what, now there's nothing left. You can't even take care of yourself. You can't even look after your own self. How are you going to take care of me and my needs? So, you know what, the best thing I would advise for you to do is to just free me from this nikah. Free me from this marriage and I can go and settle with someone else. And this is part of life. When he realized that my own wife with whom I lived so many years and she's doing this to me, he also realized, you know what, is this best I separate because I can't take care of her. So he then divorced her Mu'asab and then he went on his own way. It is said Mu'asab that after some time she got married, she settled with a new husband mm -hmm. and again Mu'asab it was the same day of Eid mm -hmm. and she sat with him after Eid Salah to have a meal and then just before he could eat something or they could eat something as a family, as a husband and wife, as a couple, there was a knock on the door. After inquiry it was known that there's a beggar at the door. This time here the new husband, when he heard there's a beggar who came at my door, mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar, he said to his wife that uh, through the parda you could maybe perhaps pass this food. And he given his food to his wife to go and pass it on to the beggar. When the wife takes the food and goes towards the door, he just hears a scream and then everything falls to the ground and she goes unconscious. Mm. The husband leaves everything behind. He rushes out there to see what is the matter. And then he finds his wife that's unconscious and that beggar is uh, watching shocked and he's like running away. Mm. He never done anything. The gate was still closed. However, Allahu Akbar. After she regained her conscious masab, the husband was a bit worried and concerned for his wife. So he asked her, what is the matter? Did he do something to you? Did he hurt you? What did you see that you shouted so loud, you scream and then you go to the ground? She says, my dear husband, today, today on the day of Eid, I have seen the ghazab and the wrath of Allah. Allah. I had witnessed the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon this, the husband's like, what do you mean? It's a day of happiness, the day of joy and, and celebration. On this day of Eid, you say you saw the adab of Allah, you saw the punishment of Allah. How? Mm -hmm. She says, well, some time back, I was married to a man who also on the day of Eid pushed a beggar instead of giving him something. Mm -hmm. Allah then made that person see such bad moments and days in his life that I had to separate from him. Today, the person who came to my door was my first husband. Allah, Allah was birth. I saw the anger of Allah. Allah. Then the husband who was a second husband, he says, Oh my dear wife, you say that you have seen the azab of Allah, but you have not seen the rahmat of Allah. She's like, no, what do you mean? And then he says, well, the husband who came there, your ex-husband, was your first husband. But now I'm the same one who got pushed by your husband. I'm the rahmat of Allah, whereas he is the demonstration of Allah's azab. Allah Akbar. Having heard this, Lucky she never gone conscious for the second time. <laughs> Dear viewers of Madani channel, Allahu Akbar, this is the rahmat and the karam and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those who do justice, upon those who do we should, show hospitality. We should fear the hidden plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know. Today we are in, you know, in good financial standing, influence, contacts, connections, mm. and a person can, you know, that money, that wealth, that power can get to a person's head. Right. And they could, you know, uh, use it in the wrong ways. Maybe gambling, maybe to uh, threaten to people or to usurp people's properties, whatever it is, alcohol, drugs. You, tomorrow you don't know. Tables, Allah, will, Allah. tables can turn. We, we see it. We see people's tables turning. Mm. We, mm. It, within uh, moments, within days or months and years before you know it, Everything is gone. Allah, and the Allah, person Allah. can't even afford, can't even afford a taxi ride. Mm. Can't even afford a taxi Allah, ride, you know. Allah. And uh, so, uh, enjoy it responsibly. Uh, Hosey Park, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, famous saying, yeah. uh, that's mentioned, Amir Al-Sunnah Dhamul Barakatul Ali mentions this in uh, his book as well, one of his books, that Hosey Park says, to everybody is saying today is the day of Eid. Today is the day of Eid. Everybody is joyous. Everybody is happy. 
But for me, the day of Eid will be when I leave this world with my Iman intact. Allah. That, that is the day of Eid for me. Subhanallah. Of course, we can't be like awliya Allah. You know, if Allah wants to make a person, He can. But, you know, uh, we can't reach that level where our thought proce uh, procession is that, you know, uh, even at that moment on the day where everybody is celebrating, I'm thinking about death. Mm. I'm thinking about dying with Iman. Allah. Which is, of course, more important than everything else. Uh, but enjoy it. But be responsible in how you're enjoying it and put a smile on each other's faces, but within, again, the boundaries of the Sharia. Of the Sharia. May Allah Kareem grant us tawfiq to practice upon the Madani pearls which we have just heard from our respected ulama, dear viewers of Madani channel. Uh, uh, many people out there who I have heard from Mohamed um, Qadir Sahib have told me, you know what, we love sitting as a family and watching Madani channel on the day of Eid. I, <laughs> you know why? Because we get to see Amir Ahl Sunnah and Baha, ah, which is so unique, mashallah. His celebration, his way of smiling, of gifting and giving, mashallah, is just unique, mashallah. Just, just unique. You know, there are so many disciples, so many murids, there are so many lovers and ushaq out there who revere him, who respect him, who love him, who wants who won moments and time from Amir al-Sunnah. And Amir al-Sunnah, subhanAllah, he has to give so many people gifts, Masab. Sometimes he gives people with his smile. Sometimes he gives them in terms of kind and cash. Sometimes he would remove someone's difficulty. Allahu Akbar. He got different ways and andaz of making your day a good day for you, Masab. Alhamdulillah. So this is his andaz, which uh, Dao Islami people have inherited from Amir al-Sunnah. And this is what we practice in our countries, wherever we are. So this is one culture which we have taken from Dawat Islami, Masab. Alhamdulillah which is of course the sunnah of Mustafa Jani Rahman sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we try for our sisters, our children, our offspring to follow. Yani, who is saying do not celebrate but if only if our dressing code could be in according to Sharia? So, who said do not go to the parks? But if only we went there making sure that our gaze is controlled and it does not fall on any ghair mahram. Who said? Who said using new clothes is haram? It's a good thing to use new clothes. Actually, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he likes to see, you know, if he has bestowed you with wealth, with blessings, he likes to see the effect of the blessing that he has Allah bestowed upon you, Allah upon Allah you. Allah. you know, that is another way of expressing our gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't suit for a, for a person who, who is uh, maybe, who is very wealthy, but to dress like a beggar. Mm doesn't suit him. It doesn't suit him, right. Then it is, in a way, it is na shukri. Mm -hmm. You know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much, but you making it up seem like, you know, he has given you nothing. Mm -hmm. So there is a beautiful hadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the effect of his blessings upon his body. Ah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we can show and uh, express our gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Masha the blessings Allah. that Allah. he has bestowed upon us. Yeah, but. Whether in terms of whether we, we eat uh, good healthy food, mm. maybe it, it can be a little bit expensive, but no problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us enough. Mashallah. And we can extend the same thing to our fellow Muslim brothers because uh, again, uh, uh, another beautiful hadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi that none of you can become a Muslim unless you love for your fellow brothers what you love for yourself. So it is not only that, you know, we must eat nice and You know, there's a very good example good. of what you said, Muhammad, yes. of, of the very famous Khalifa in Islam, uh, Hazrat Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he used to give sacks of sugar in the path of Allah. So somebody asked him, Ya Sayyidi, why don't you just give the value of it? Why are you giving the actual sugar itself? And then he says, well, Allah, sugar is very beloved to me. Sugar is very dear to me. I like eating sugar, consuming with sugar. So I want to give that which I love. So why must I give the value of it? and not the actual item itself which I love and like. So mashallah, just in line with what Muasab had mentioned, that uh, we can show the gratitude to Allah Azza by the, the effects of the things that we can wear, we can use, we can eat. For example, show the shukr of the tongue. He gave you tongue to talk. What is the way to show shukr of the tongue? Don't make ghibat. So, on the day of Eid, there are more possibilities of criticizing someone's dress, mm. someone's shoe, someone's clothing, someone's hairstyle, someone's this, someone's that. On the day of Eid, you stay away from that. Mm. That's the way to show shukr for your tongue.
Likewise, for the eyes as well, you can say, Ya Allah, Zawajalla, I have got eyes. I want to make shukr on the day of Eid because you've given me eyes, a pair of eyes that never go. The vision is still there. And maybe the thing can be that on the day of Eid, on the park, there's so many people intermingling. I will be one side. I will make sure that I can play with my family, but my gaze is lowered. I'm within the, uh, the confined uh, rules and regulations and borders of the Sharia, and I would not want to cross the limits whatsoever. This should be your target on the day of Eid, and to make sure even after Eid, this continues till the next Ramadan. This is a great achievement, dear viewers, if we can have istiqamat and steadfastness upon our festivals in a good way. So you ask yourself, you ask yourself, do I want to celebrate Eid like how Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa celebrated Eid or do I want to celebrate Eid as how the Western world teaches us? Th this is why we have honorable scholars of Islam, the righteous scholars. They keep bringing us back hmm. that, you know, be careful what hmm. you are doing with your life. Hmm. Hmm. Be careful that, you know, you don't, for example, celebrate Eid, you know, uh, contravening and going against the laws of Islam. Be careful that you don't uh, dress in such attire that is revealing, that is transparent, that, you know, people are going to gaze at you and commit sin, and you, by wearing that, you're going to commit sin. Mm. Be careful that you don't indulge in wastefulness, in israf, in wastage, in its extravagance. Mm. When you, whatever you are buying, whatever food items you are buying, whatever mm. you are wearing, etc. So our ulama ikram, the, the righteous scholars, they keep bringing us back and reminding us. If you minus these people, the ulama ikram, then a person is like free, like there's nobody to catch hold of that Allah, person. There's Allah, nobody, Allah, who's going to advise us? You mind this piece, people like Amir Ahlul Sunnat, Damul Barakatul Aliyah, and other Mashaykh Ahlul Sunnat, Ulama Ahlul Sunnat, you mind is them, what's going to happen to us? Masa, what what's left? left? We will just run in the wrong direction, not even knowing anything. Allah Akbar. And you know, Allah Akbar. So this Allah is where we need to be us. very, very, very much concerned. I mean, Masa, this is the day for one day celebration. You know, uh, the next question uh, would be, Mu'asab, are there countries, are there places where the celebration would last maybe for two, three days? Can Mu'ala Abdul Qadir Sahib maybe perhaps shed some light on this aspect as well? Alhamdulillah, we are uh, fortunate enough to be in the same con continent where that uh, country might be, Alhamdulillah. And uh, it is the country of Nigeria, a beautiful country in South Africa. Mashallah, Mashallah. As well as there are other countries as well where Eid is celebrated more than for more than one day, Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So the unique thing about this, now the African culture, we, we have spoken about the Asian culture and the Western culture and the Middle Eastern culture, the African culture where we actually are, uh, where the, the Alhamdulillah, this is uh, the country of uh, those pious predecessors, Alhamdulillah, who from, uh, you know, from amongst whom Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu. So through his sadaqah, inshallah, let's uh, discuss some of their traditions, alhamdulillah, in uh, Nigeria and Ethiopia and different uh, parts of Africa and Malawi, which, which is called the warm heart of Africa, subhanallah. So the traditions, they, they vary, but because they have the same, along the same ethnic groups, so it's not very much different. It's yeah. along the same line, but it will differ from maybe from country to country. For example, in Ethiopia, the people, they love coffee. They, Achha. subhanallah, so on the day of Eid, they're brewing coffee yeah, and yeah, different yeah. types of coffees, mashallah. Mm. In Nigeria, mm. it's a two-day celebration. Mm. The first day is usual. They uh, perform the Eid Salah, alhamdulillah. After that, they intermingle with the family members and share their joy, happiness, exchange gifts, mashallah. And they have a special meal which is similar to our pulao and biryani, you know, where meat and rice, subhanAllah, they mix it together, that's what they eat. And it is also popular in Arab world as well, and as well as in, in, in Persia. This is a Persian dish, biryani, or some assume that it is coming from there. In Azerbaijan and other countries also, this is now the common theme. Some may call it biryani, some may call it uh, what you call... Um, Palau. Akni, some <laughs> they call it Pulao, yeah. and some people may just not name anything, but just have meat and rice together, mashallah. Sometimes spit braai is done and uh, the rice is gathered around and the whole family or the whole community sits around it on a huge round table they eat from there, mashallah. That's actually one of the, uh, I wouldn't say specialities, but one of the customs here in South Africa, the braai. 
Mm, yes, people, yes, people yes. love their bribes, uh, you know. Yes, 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 that yes. Everybody's together and, you know, <laughs> one side people are brying the meat, what they call barbecue, and the other side the ladies are preparing the salads and the mash and what have you. But also uh, regarding uh, spit bry or spit roast, another country in Africa hmm. where they celebrate Eid for three days right, is Morocco. Achha. Morocco is part of Northern Africa. Right. Now, normally Northern Africa... Eastern Africa, these places are majority Muslim. Some of them are 90%, 99% Muslim population. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, of course, Africa, uh, more than 60% of Africa is Muslim. If you look at the general population Jim, of Africa. 100%. I forgot to mention about Indonesia. Achha. That the largest Muslim population in the world Achha. is Indonesia. Allahu Akbar. No army, no army went there. Subhan no soldiers Allah. went there. But the Arab business people, the wealthy community went there and, you know, they saw that their business ethics were so beautiful, they became Muslims. About Morocco very quickly, right? So three days they're celebrating Eid. And uh, so normal, you know, family get together, uh, they buy uh, toys for the kids and they have this uh, spit roast of the lamb leg. They love this here actually, where they they all get together, they have the spit roast and they enjoy this meal. So, and and they do it, uh, you know, in style. And close by is Egypt. Close by is Egypt where Murasab can enlighten us more about how... What specialities yes, they yes, have yes. there? In fact, in Egypt, dear viewers of Madani Channel, as Masaf Qibla had mentioned, and I had celebrated Eid in, in the beautiful yeah, but country of Misr. And the experience there, as, as well as different Masab, uh, they as well, it's about dishes, it's about food, and a very special dish, uh, which is, of course, uh, then um, uh, cooked. And uh, by, by the way, the national dish is called khushari. And it's a very tasty dish. It's a very cheap affordable uh, dish Gigi. and it's available throughout Misr in Egypt but uh, mostly mainly Muslim Egyptians and Misris they would like to gather and have family get togethers like uh, especially at Mount Sinai uh, uh, they would gather the place where Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had communicated with Allah azza wa jalla. Uh, uh, people who know about it would like to gather there and have uh, uh, maybe for the sake of picnics or something or picnic just to gain barakat from this land. Uh. Uh, this is the same place where Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, was blessed and was honored with communicating with Allah azza wa jalla. So they would want to take barakah and blessings from there, even at the place where the pyramids are, Mu'asab. So they have their own unique way, but from what we gather together, Mu'asab, they believe in get-togethers a lot. They, they strongly believe in, in spending the day and the moment being with the person whom you love the most. Yeah. So they do not deprive their parents from this, from what I have seen more of uh, and what I have witnessed. They always make sure that their parents, or maybe the culture is such that some areas are very staunch in this, so they would follow it. And gosh, this could be the system everywhere. Mm-hmm. Whereas in every happiness, as I know, okay, in your house, in your family, there are 10, but you would like to take five and leave the rest. You would take eight and leave the rest. For example, and sometimes the older ones in the families get left because they can't walk maybe. They are not fast as you are fast. They're not quick because you are quicker. Try and include them in your happiness. Include them. Yes, your mother was a person who used to take you when you were the child for each celebration. Now you gone big, she's gone old. She can't go anywhere. It's your turn to take her and go then. Yeah, what what so you're saying is so Anji. true, Zul, that when the parents, you know, the young, they are the ones who are preparing all the mitais and the sweetmeats and the dishes. And mother, father is going out, he's buying all the items. They become old. It's like, you know, for some people, uh, they just, you know, uh, just baggage now. Like, you know, mm-hmm. keep them one side. Or worse still, throw them in an in, in old age home. Uh, how, how dark is that house or that home where Allah, you are celebrating Allah. Eid and your mother and father is in the old age home <laughs> all alone? So that, that, that is a, that's a shame, Muslim. That's a shame. That's yeah. a shame. Most you know, definitely. wait till your kids do that to you. Yeah. But end of the day, the, the do's and the don'ts are there. Enjoy it, you know, uh, respectfully within the, uh, the confines of Sharia. Yeah, but and you know, you'll you'll have a good time and you'll earn thawab at the Mashallah. same time. Mashallah. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, there's so many things that we have learned today. Overall, you know, the Eid celebration throughout the globe on this little planet between approximately 1.7 billion Muslims. Allahu Akbar. And this day is such a day that this happiness is not only confined around Muslims, Masab. Mm-hmm. It's not confined to Muslims itself, but rather this is such a happiness that's shared to every person. Allah. This is that happiness, insan to insan, 
ये तो वो खुशी है कि हम जानवरों को भी देते हैं वी शो अवर ग्रेटिट्यूड एंड हैप्पीनेस इवन टू एनिमल्स मीनिंग ए पर्सन इज नॉट हार्श विद अदर एनिमल्स एंड ऑफ यू डोंट सी पीपल हर्टिंग पीपल कॉजिंग डिफिकल्टीज फॉर पीपल सो अलहमदिल्ला इफ़ यू आर इन्वॉल्व इन सम रोड रेज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ डिफिकल्टी try and keep cool on the day of eid try to be happy on the day of eid seek allah's forgiveness and there are certain ibadat to be made on the day of eid as well we have now come to the end of the program after such a program for which i wished that it could continue masab there are some other points which were coming to mind but they say time is always of the essence masab i'm sure many of the viewers out there had their own experience as they were listening to our conversations maybe of the place you have been to maybe at some lake maybe at some place uh, out of your hometown If your intentions are to travel on the day of Eid or after Eid, be safe wherever you are. Keep reciting the Rudi Pa. Keep making du'a for the Ummah at large. Try and remember that if you are celebrating your Eid, they are also human beings, and try and include them in your du'a if you can't reach out your help to them. Inshallah, Zawajal. We say shukran to our respected uh, guest of honors, Mashallah, and none other than Hafiz Qari, Maulana Nushad Tari, and Wazir Maulana Abdul Qadir Qadri Mu'ini Tari, who blessed us today, and uh, Mashallah, Zawajal, have given us. so much of time tomorrow is another day we are to be back with another episode uh, same time same place on your madini channel so until then dear viewers keep reciting through the park and remember this is the mission of your fragrant movement of quran and sunnah that we must strive to reform ourselves and the people of the entire world insha allah azza wa jalla sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam It's a celebration of Eid. Let us rejoice in Eid. It's a celebration of Eid. Let us rejoice in Eid.